Beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I wanted to address a brother too, just just to try to get him to, to really take what he believes and and see how you know what, what, what scripture allows to play out. You know, because he, he he wrote other things that said, well, you know, if there's any teaching out there that that, that teaches you uh, not to keep the law or something, um, then then we don't have a problem, and and, and that's a problem. You know, and I, I got one thing to say before I want to show him these these two scriptures, and that's this: Why do you want to keep the law? And I'm I'm, I'm asking you, um, Yecheskel Yehudi, why do you want to keep the law? Because when I talk on the Facebook groups, I often hear this phrase of, "Well, I want to practice my indigenous culture. I want to practice my Hebrew culture." And, and people have this myth in their head that, you know, to practice these laws is to actually practice my, my, my people's culture, my, my ways of, of life that, that God has set down. And, and so they try to look at it more than just a religion, which is a good thing in general to look at something more than a religion, right? You want to have a deeper meaning. But the fact is, the question is, what is that deeper meaning? Because if you're going to say that that is it, then you have to ask yourself, is that the purpose that God set down these laws, you know, for the laws of Moses? Is that the reason why? When God showed up on the scene and he said, OK, I want to establish these laws among, you know, my people, Israel. It was not just to have another indigenous culture or things like that just like the egyptians and the canaanites and the amorites and the phoenicians and the greeks and the romans and the assyrians and the babylonian no they already had their kingdoms they already had their gods they already had their culture they already had their way of being every time you look in the old testament god made sure that one message that the israelites got is that you will be a separate people I will sanctify you. I will set you apart. You are going to be holy. And these laws are going to be just for that reason. That is the reason why God gave those laws. It was pointing to something. It was pointing to a kingdom. A kingdom that had a certain a certain way of dress. Oh, you know what? Uh, Brother Jordan wants to go ahead and, and share something. So I'm going to be real quick here. You know, maybe we'll talk about that next time you know i want to share something real quick go ahead and take your time no rush no man you know i, you know, I still want to you know because i don't want to you know take over now but you know i, I want to look at this and I, I i showed this with my uh paul and the law thing i'm not gonna bring it up on screen tonight. if you read in first corinthians chapter five verses five through eight this is what it says you are to deliver this man, right, this this sinner that was, you know, in the church, but he was acting up. You are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Now, time out. I don't remember any kind of Old Testament judgment law being given like this with, with this kind of grace. Oh, but yet you claim that if, if no one is practicing the law, then, you know, I guess there's going to be a problem. Well, what do you do with this right here? What, what about this judgment, which is given from Paul to the Corinthian church that has grace attached with it? Give this man over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that way his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Now, the Old Testament, hey, that would have just said, you know what? You did this bad thing, death, you know, or you, you're separated from Israel. You're cut off. But yet the judgment in the New Testament is grace. Even if that grace may even hurt a little bit. I'm going to go to continue on. Your boasting is not good. Notice it doesn't say your lack of law keeping. You do not know what a little leaven Le le leaven, I mean, do you not know that a little leaven leavens a whole lump? Cleanse out the old leaven so that a be uh, so that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened. 
for Christ is our Passover lamb has been yeah for Christ our Passover lamb has been uh, sacrificed now time out the law is supposed to make sure that you keep the sacrificial Passover but yet it's saying that Christ is the Passover lamb it doesn't say that in the Old Testament the lamb is the Passover lamb but yet in the New Testament Christ is the Passover lamb and also the New Testament does not uh, require you to sacrifice any animals now the Old Testament law keeping requires you to do that oh but we're not going to do that part well now you're not keeping the law it also says what for Christ or Passover lamb right this also it has a lot to do with John 1936 it uses a quote from the Exodus Passover which is Exodus 12 46 right but anyway it says therefore celebrate the festival in other words therefore let us keep this feast not with the old leaven the leaven of malice and evil but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth now let me go ahead and compare this way that there that that Paul is telling them how to keep the Passover for one he's saying replace a lamb with a human being which is Christ which means that we don't have to sacrifice lambs anymore and also when you do this whole leaven practice we're going to focus on something else we're going to focus on like principles like you know like getting rid of malice and evil instead of breadcrumbs look at what it says in Exodus 12 15 seven days you shall eat unleavened bread on the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses for if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day that person shall be cut off from Israel that's how you practice the Passover lamb according to the law right that he, he so desperately wants to keep but in 1st Corinthians 5 verse 5 through 8 Paul isn't saying to keep the Passover like that anymore the focus is no longer breadcrumbs the focus is you know principles people right I want to remove the malice out of my heart, not the breadcrumbs from out of my corner anymore. Look else what it says. When you have 1 Corinthians uh, 5 verses 5 through 11, it says this on onward uh, throughout verse 11. It says, you know, I wrote unto you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Not at all meaning the sexual immoral of this world or, or the greedy swindlers or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world but I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed or is an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or a swindler not even to eat with such a one so notice he's naming all these moral things right that's what they're looking out for. They're not looking out for people who, well, they didn't keep the Sabbath. They didn't keep the dietary law. They didn't, you know, sacrifice. They didn't give their, their offering of, you know, uh, their, their oblations. And, and they didn't keep a feast. That, no, he wasn't even talking about that. So in the New Testament, leaven is not the focus. But people are. My final verse, look at what it says at, at the end. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. Therefore, purge the evil person from among you. Notice it didn't say purge the, the, the leavened bread that's in your household. No, the focus is your heart. The focus is what's inside there. The focus is, is the evil people. Matter of fact, give them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh that keeps on causing them to sin so that their spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord that's why that's how you practice a Passover in the new covenant so if you're gonna sit here and say well if you don't keep the law then uh, I don't want nothing to do with you well look at how they're basically spiritualizing the, the Old Testament ways of, of how they end up uh, keeping these feast days and laws you know and yet this is the reason why the new fulfills the old you don't have to do the old exactly in the old way 
to fulfill it. That's not how you fulfill it. You fulfill the, the, the old by the way it was directed by the new, by the new law lawgiver, which is Christ. And so you miss out on all this stuff that makes you closer to Christ and more like him because, well, you're worried about breadcrumbs. Oh, I did this right. But are you changed from it? Right? Now, I could go on and on, but like I said, I, I don't want to be all night. I just want to throw that out there. You know, I got other people on the panel. But we're just trying to get you um, to think, man. We're really just trying to get you to rethink. And there's other passages out there like that. Um, but that was just one. That was just one. You go ahead, man. 